Okay, so in this video we're going to continue talking about exponential functions, but this time we're going to solve for the rate or the initial value. Before we were given those things usually, and we had to solve for uh, a, a particular output of the exponential function uh, or find or solve for the time at which that output would be achieved. Uh, so basically we're just playing this game where we're solving for the different components of the exponential function. So uh, let's look at these two exponential functions I have written here. You see on the left I have this fancier, more complicated looking one, and on the right is this much simpler one. Um, of course what I have in mind is solving some interest rate problems, like when you deposit money in a bank for instance. And when uh, you have the function on the right, when you have this one, then you're really talking about banks that compound the interest rate continuously. And if you're talking about the one on the left, then you're talking about banks that compound uh, just every so often during a year, I mean regularly of course, like monthly or biannually, etc. And that's what the capital N stands for. Okay, so notice there are different components in the, uh, in the exponential function. There's the output, there's the initial value, and you know all this already, or at least we've spoken about it in previous videos. Uh, what I just circled is the rate, and that N is how often it gets compounded per year. Okay, on the right, P0 in green is still the initial value. In purple, we have the rate. And E is just a fixed number. It's the base uh, for, the exponent, for this exponential function. And of course, again, that's what appears when you compound things continuously. Okay, so those are the two exponential functions that we're going to look at in this video. So let's get to an example. Uh, here's what I'm talking about. So suppose that you have a bank that compounds things continuously, and it does it at an annual rate of 5%. Okay, this is something you know and they tell you beforehand. And here you are, you uh, want to figure out how much money do you actually need to deposit in the bank initially, okay, in order to make $1,000 in 10 years. So you see a lot of information was given here. First of all, it tells me right off the bat that the exponential function I have to use has to look like this. P of t equals P0 e to the 0 0.05 times t, right? Because it's continuously, that means I use the one with base e. The annual rate is 5%. That's why I have r equals 0 0.05. And the P0 I didn't write because that's what I want to find out. So you see this is the unknown. Okay, the P0. Ah, but you see it also tells me I want to make $1,000 in 10 years. So what does that mean? The output has to be 1,000 when what? When you plug in the number 10 at 10 years. So we have equals P0 e to the 0.05t, but t is equal to 10. So there we go. We've plugged in all the information they've given us. And look, the only thing that we don't have is the P0, and that's the thing we need to solve for. And so this thing, e to that number, is just going to be a number. That's something you plug into your calculator. And then you take 1,000 and you divide by that number. And so at the end of the day, you'll get excuse me, P0 equals 1,000 divided by whatever this number is. In fact, it's uh, 1.6. 4, 8, 7, 2, and so your final answer is P0 equals $600, $606, excuse me, and 53 cents. Okay, so you need $606 and 53 cents in order, uh, you need to start with that money in order to make $1,000 in 10 years if you deposit that uh, initial amount at the bank at that particular bank. Now let's switch it up a bit. Let's do the same problem, except now this bank is going to compound things monthly. Same stuff. You want to make $1,000 in 10 years, the annual rate is the same, and you still want to find out how much money did you, do you actually have to deposit at this bank. So the only thing that changes is the function we use. This time we know P of t has to look like P of t equals P0 times 1 plus the rate, which is 0 0.05 again, divided by, you see, now it's 
divided by monthly, so that means how much, how many times per year? 12. And we raise all of that to the 12th power times t. Okay, that's what the function looks like now. So we want to make a thousand dollars in 10 years. So a thousand should equal p0 times one plus all of this stuff. All right, I'm just going to rewrite it. Divided by 12 to the 12th power and times 10 now, okay? Now, this whole thing, that's just another number. You could plug that into your calculator. Make sure you do it in the right order and you put the parentheses in the right place. If you do that, you should get 1.64701, all right? Notice it's kind of close to the uh, number from uh, the previous problem, but not exactly because you see we're compounding um, monthly instead of continuously. This is equal to 1,000. And again, to solve for P0, you just take 1,000 and you divide by this number. And you plug that into your calculator. You get P0 equals $607.16. So you need to invest, you need to deposit slightly uh, larger amount, okay? About a dollar more. Okay. Now, those two problems we just did, we had to solve for the initial value, the, the P0, the thing in green, okay? But let's do problems where the P0 is actually given to you, and now you have to solve for the rate. 